Hello from Relation Productions. Today I'm going to go over a modification I made on my TAG micro lathe in regards to the power feed. Maybe of interest to some people. Um, basically, what we have here just a basic setup TAG micro lathe. Not a whole lot additional on there, mostly stock items. But recently I added a power feed to it, and shortly after, I had a separate drive unit to it as well. In a few minutes I'll show you what this will do. But basically looking at the hardware on top here, uh, we got uh, just basically a TAG micro lathe. It has modification to put the new power feed unit on it. Um, this unit actually came without one and was added on later. It wasn't bought this way like you can buy them currently but it has the uh, power feed add-on afterwards here and as you can see I have a small drive motor running the power feed instead of normally you'd be running it off of the main spindle via a rubber band from there to your pulley. But basically all I have here mounted is a 540 RC lathe motor or RC crawler motor commonly used for too. And this gives me independent control of my feed this way. I didn't really like the way it was set up running it off the spindle that limits how many speeds you can use on the main spindle and this way I can go through all six speeds whatever I want and I have additional um, three different um, speeds with a variable speed controller to it so a very wide range of speeds and infinitely controllable between those speeds too and basically all I did for a speed controller here is I have a modified um, this is actually a very cheapy tattoo gun power supply I bought off of eBay. Now if you're looking to do this yourself and you want to have a little nicer of a unit, I'd recommend buying just a regular power supply for 20 bucks. This thing isn't much worth anything at all. Probably about 40 bucks you can get a decent low-end power supply that'll run, run what you want it to. But basically here, it's just a power supply, goes up to about 15 and a half volts and goes all the way down to 1.4 volts as you can see. Now originally the supply had set up where the switches are, had quarter inch headphone jack plugs for putting in a foot control and plugging in your tattoo gun and using the exact, exact same holes I stuck two switches in here and we got the main power on and off switch and we've got forward, neutral, and reverse three-way toggle switch to run the motor. Let me show you here we're running it only at 1.4 volts so it's barely moving at all gives us extremely extremely slow feed. There's forward and back to reverse. And you can see the kind of speeds we're getting. I mean you can't even really see it moving. It's moving so incredibly slow. Uh, one of the disadvantages I noticed too with this power supply is it will not handle much amps. I'm running an 85 turn 540 size motor which doesn't draw a heck of a lot but still this very cheap power supply I can only start it and stop it at about ooh, just under 4 volts and, and you can see too at the indicator this thing it does not hold very well it's it balances all over not a very precise thing for 20 bucks I guess it works but if it ever burns out which I'm kinda hoping it does uh, I'll put a better unit in there in this piece of crap but this is the fastest I can start it up and stop it at 
any higher than that and go to if I can get it just above four we're at four now that still runs it come on now you can see just a here above four volts it doesn't want to start there's some sort of auto protection fortunately built into the circuits there oh it'll run reverse oh there we go yeah it's not holding we we're at 4.2 it seems to have been the limit there if I can it it's not a yeah but as you can see again there it won't start it won't start from that high of a voltage I have to work it down to a lower voltage and then once it's running I can ramp it up you can hear the motor running there and she cooks pretty good at 15 and a half volts there you can see her going and you get a pretty good feed on this too for anyone familiar with the typical setup on this um, the carriage should just stay still until you grab and hold the handle and you can see that's moved at a nice steady rate pretty quick rate too now I'm on the lowest gear setting here too so if I wanted to I can make it faster still but I have a good range of speed still with this and again if I want to do it in reverse I gotta drop her all the way down and then ramp it back up again if you're not looking for a real high quality unit if you want to get by and make something up like this for cheap this would be alright solution I like how compact it is it kinda of just fits in there and the uh, quarter inch headphone jacks they made good use of themselves for modifying switches to be set in there but otherwise I'd recommend anything else for a power supply anyway basically what we got under there you can see they run the wires underneath and she comes up on top and give a closer view with a little 85 turn 540 size motor real nice Japanese made ball bearing support should last a very long time hopefully and you can see I've got a shroud welded on around it that's because this is an um, open can open end bell motor and trying to keep debris out of it being right in the back right in the path of debris from the lathe and I've just got her mounted right on the spot making use of the two corner mounts for the gearbox for the worm gear drive for the uh, power feed that already exists there we got some slots I'll probably change this out with a regular gates belt like the main drive has and I'd like to change the main drive eventually to a little heavier of a belt but for now the rubber band seems to be making do all I've got for a pulley on that just for the little pulley and just a chunk of nylon I turned down just has a press fit over the shaft it seems to work very well but uh, that's basically the setup I have have any comments or questions please feel free to leave them below and thank you for watching